Hi, I'm Phil with Right Rope. I wanted to make a follow-up video to our first video about how to build a rope railing or decorative rope fence. We've been getting a lot of questions about how we attach the rope to the post, how to calculate the rope length, how to drill the holes, what screws we used, etc. I want to answer those questions today and give a little bit more detailed look into how to get your project done. Let's start with choosing the right diameter and length. We discussed the rope sizing in the first video, but generally you want to use one and a quarter inch or one and a half inch rope for four inch posts, one and a half inch rope or two inch rope for six inch posts, and two inch diameter or larger for posts over six inches. Usually bigger is better for achieving your aesthetic goals, and obviously there are some economic considerations when deciding on the diameter, but choosing the largest diameter that fits your budget will help your project look awesome. Determining the length of rope you need can be a little bit tricky. If you're using square posts with rope going through drilled holes, it is a pretty straightforward process. Measure the overall length of the run and add for the sag in between posts. If you have to turn corners, plan on ending each run of rope in the corner and starting again with a new piece going the other direction. We can cut each piece to length for you. Just add each different length to your cart and we will cut them to your exact specifications. To determine the extra rope for sag, use a small rope or string or a flexible tape measure. Pull the measurement tight from post to post and let the tape relax to the desired sag to see how much extra rope it will take. This project required about three extra inches of rope per section. If you're using natural fiber manila rope, you'll need to add 10 to 15% to account for the shrinkage. If you are using round posts or pilings and you are planning to wrap the rope around the post, you need to figure out how much rope is needed to get around the post and decide how many wraps you want at each post. To figure the amount of rope needed to get around your post, you multiply the diameter or width of the post times pi or 3.14 for easy figuring. The trick here is that you need to use the center line of the rope as the diameter. For example, this post is about nine and a half inches in diameter. If I take nine and a half times 3.14, I get roughly 30 inches. Let's say I want three wraps around the post, then I would need 90 inches. Here is a 90 inch piece of two inch Pro Manila. As you can see, it's not long enough to get around the post three times. You will need to use the center line of the rope by adding the diameter of the rope to the diameter of the post. The diameter of the center line of this rope around this post is 11 and a half inches. When I multiply that number, 11 and a half times 3.14, I get about 36 inches. 36 times three is 108. I need 108 inches instead of 90 inches to get around this post three times. Let's look at how to attach the rope to the post. If you're using square posts, the cleanest look is achieved by drilling holes and running the rope through the post. This also uses the least amount of rope and doesn't require any special hardware. You will want to mark and drill both sides of the post and have your holes meet in the middle so that you don't blow out the wood on the back side when the drill makes it through. A drill press is the safest way to drill these, but if your posts are already installed, you may have to use a heavy duty hand drill. We have found that the best drill bit to use is a threaded Forstner bit. You can also use a hole saw, but you'll have to chisel out the slugs, or you can use a spade bit. That works nicely if your rope diameters are smaller than one and a half inches. This project is using two and a half inch Pro Manila rope and used a two and nine sixteenths Forstner bit. At the end post, there are a few different methods that you can use. If you like this look where the rope ends inside the post, you should drill approximately halfway through the post and screw the rope in from the backside of the post into the end of the rope. If you get your Pro Manila rope from us, it will come hot cut at the end and the screw will screw right into the center of the rope and have a lot of holding power. If you need to cut your rope in the field, we sell the hot cutting tools or we have a video on how to cut and seal the ropes with normal household tools. You don't have to invest in a cutter if you don't want to. If you have a quarter post, drill one hole halfway through the post and then drill the other hole 90 degrees from that hole intersecting the two holes inside the post. Screw the first one in and then screw the second one in. You will need some screws that are a couple of inches longer to get into the second rope. Another idea that people choose is drilling all the way through the end post and tying a knot to keep the rope from pulling back through. If you want to tie a knot at the end, you will need 12 times the rope's diameter in extra length to be able to make one overhand knot. One more method that people choose to do is to wrap the last post several times, although this is less popular on square posts. 
At the intermediate post, set the sag how you want it to look and put a screw in to hold the rope from being pulled through either direction. We used some large power lag screws for this rope railing, but most people use stainless steel deck screws. The lag screws that we used are one quarter inch diameter by four and a half inch long Spax brand screws that we found at Menards. Most hardware or big box stores will have a similar product. The stainless steel deck screws are also readily available at most hardware stores. If you are using the larger diameters of rope, the larger power lags will work better. And if you're using four inch posts with one and a half inch rope or smaller, a three inch stainless steel deck screw will work well. You can always add more screws to help hold the rope if you feel like it needs to be more secure. It will look really nice if you countersink the heads of the screws by using a drill bit of the same size or a little bit larger than the head of the screw. You can also pre-drill the wood with a drill bit one size smaller than the shank of the screw. Most synthetic ropes are true to size and most natural fiber ropes are oversized. It is a good idea to wait until you have the rope to determine what size bit to use, but if you're buying pro manila rope from us, the best bit size is 1 16th of an inch larger than the rope. If you're using manila rope, be sure to add 10 to 15% extra rope length to accommodate the rope shrinking when it gets wet and use a drill bit about 3 16ths of an inch bigger than the rope's diameter. If you are using round posts or pilings, the most popular method of constructing a rope fence is the classic nautical look that you might see at the beach or lakefront where the rope is wrapped around the post a few times. This method is by far the simplest, but it does require quite a bit more rope. Like we said in the beginning of the video, figure out what diameter you want and calculate the length. When you are ready to install the rope, you simply use some stainless steel deck screws about twice as long as the diameter of the rope to attach the rope to the posts. Bury the head of the screws beneath the surface of the rope and you are good to go. You can use as many screws as you need to secure the rope to the posts, but generally two or three screws per post is enough. You can also drill holes and run the rope through them on round posts or pilings if you prefer although that method is a little bit less common. I hope you found this video helpful. Go ahead and hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to our channel. We have some more rope projects that we're working on that we wanna share with you soon. Leave us a comment and let us know what you think. Best of luck on your projects and visit rightrope.com to get the right rope at the right price.